And welcome to the Citizen Report Special Bulletin. I'm Jonathan Shannon, and thank you for joining me tonight. As always, this newscast is real, in-depth, American. This is a special bulletin. It's just after 11 p.m. Eastern on this Tuesday, August 25th, 2020. Uh, just, I'm decided to come on to do this special bulletin to update you on the latest with what is now Hurricane Laura. Hurricane Laura, of course, is a major, major storm. Um, it, it could be an absolutely historic storm in terms of its size, in terms of its um, how how strong and how much it affects certain parts of the Gulf Coast. Let me launch into here with this. I'm going to have to bear with me one moment. I'm using my phone here, and this is um, the latest advisor just came out. And as of 10 p.m. Central Time, winds are sustained at 90 miles an hour. Movement is west. Excuse me. Movement is west northwest at 17 miles an hour. And right now, and I'll zoom in on this. Uh, the X you see on your screen right now is the uh, center of circulation. And by 7 p.m. Wednesday, it is forecast to be a major hurricane, meaning it, it is uh, has reached Category 3 status. And it comes ashore somewhere near the Texas-Louisiana border on the Gulf Coast, perhaps just over into Louisiana, although right now um, it certainly could still wobble over and actually make landfall in Texas. And I certainly would not rule out that possibility. So everyone along the coast from west, uh, from southwest of Houston all the way over to New Orleans and, and even over towards uh, perhaps as far as Mobile or Pensacola need to be paying very, very close attention to how this storm moves. Now, 7, 7 a.m. Thursday, we still see it uh, forecast to be a, still a hurricane, although weakening it will still be strong enough to be considered a hurricane at 7 a.m. Thursday. Uh, basically in the middle, uh, basically well inland, I should say. Um, along, perhaps along the Texas-Louisiana border, uh, moving inland. And by the time it reaches perhaps Texarkana, it will have, it is forecast to weaken uh, to a tropical storm. And that is by 7 p.m. Thursday. 7 a.m. Friday, we see it uh, forecast to weaken to a tropical depression over north central Arkansas. Perhaps um, I, I'm just trying to think of, of places in this area. Perhaps Mountain Home, uh, over towards Hardy, maybe um, Mountain View, uh, Conway, Little Rock, all of those areas. Could certainly see, um, could certainly be in the vicinity of the center of circulation at that point. 7 p.m. Friday, it's moving into southeast Missouri, uh, and then over and then continuing through the Ohio River Valley, and it's forecast to become post-tropical depression, uh, Laura, by 7 p.m. Saturday over Virginia. And then here's the interesting thing: by 7 p.m. Sunday, it has emerged. Uh, it looks like it will uh, cross through the Delmarva area and then out over into the Atlantic, where although it's still forecast to be post-tropical, it will actually re-strengthen a bit, uh, forecast to become, once again, a, a, a storm that is post, what will then be, of course, post-tropical storm, Laura, if it holds together. So all in all, this is a major, major situation um, especially Louisiana and Texas, pretty much all of Louisiana, especially uh, central and western zones of Louisiana, need to be on high alert right now. And if you haven't already made uh, preparations for this storm, you need to do so as soon as possible. And if you are anywhere basically from Baton Rouge south or let's say Interstate 10 south, you need to be evacuating immediately. You need to move to. You need to move further inland. And personally, what I would recommend is if you are in, let's say, um, uh, somewhere in the vicinity of the Gulf Coast in Louisiana, I would recommend going north at least to Shreveport. Although Shreveport is going to still see quite a bit of stuff, 
So personally, I would go at least as far inland as El Dorado or Texarkana. If you can go further, uh, that would probably be even better. Um, and of course, you need to keep in mind of inland flooding. Just because you're not near the coast doesn't mean you can't see flooding of some type. We certainly could. Um, I have a few more things to share with you right now. You have to bear with me here, and I do apologize. This is this does look a bit rough, but I'm using my phone trying to get this out quickly. So this is another product from the National Hurricane Center. It shows the surface wind field of Hurricane Laura as of 10 p.m. Central, basically right now. So th this, um, let me make sure I'm saying this right. Yes, I am. Okay, so this orange zone is basically the tropical storm force winds. The red you're seeing is the hurricane force winds. So you see, it's it just because you may not see, even if you don't see hurricane force winds, the tropical storm force winds goes out far beyond the area, the, the eye wall, if you will. Um, and uh, I'm going to show a few more things here. Now this is a pretty nice product here. Uh, now, now this is not including hurricane force winds. This is just factoring in purely tropical storm force winds, which is, um, I believe, 39 miles an hour or greater. And um, uh, again, as of right now, the advisory that just came out, they are suggesting earliest reasonable time for arrival of tropical storm level or force winds will be a give or take 8 a.m. tomorrow, 8 a.m. Wednesday, that is, certainly by 2 p.m. Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday, 8 p.m., we're seeing it move further up into the state sometime maybe just after that, um, closer to midnight uh, or, or, you know, towards the end of Wednesday going overnight into Thursday, we see it coming into Shreveport and those regions. And then, and then look at this. All the way, most of Arkansas is included in this. I mean, even um, where I grew up, Harrison looks to be right on the threshold of potentially seeing tropical storm level winds or force winds. And then something else that's interesting, this area is already being... Um, they're considering this area later on to be potentially over the open waters of the Atlantic, but that's neither here nor there because obviously uh, that's not over land and we won't take the time to go into that part. But let's let me show this now. Earliest, early, or I should say most likely arrival time. So there's a distinction. What I just showed you is earliest reasonable arrival time of tropical force storm force winds. Now this is the most what they think is most likely. So they seem to suggest about Wednesday 2 p.m. when it onsets along the coast. Some areas of Louisiana may perhaps um, the Mississippi River, the mouth of the Mississippi River, could see it early tomorrow morning. I should say Wednesday morning. And, and then pretty much it's on shore by Wednesday 8 p.m. Now, again, that is just tropical storm force winds. That does not factor in hurricane force winds. But... Um, that's just one one way to interpret this information about winds. Um, now let me show you this. This is um, wind speed probabilities of at least tropical storm force, um, or I should say tropical storm force wind speed probabilities. Um, let me look at this for a second. Okay, basically, you're basically almost certainly going to see it, about 90% likely to see it. Let me see if I can draw on this, if I can. Uh, basically anywhere in this area. Um, and then as we go further in time, um, just a second, we could see it um, coming up into Arkansas. So really anywhere from here down um, could see reasonably likely to see at least tropical storm force winds in perhaps a more narrower air zone we'll see hurricane force winds. I'm not going to um, take m too much more time to um, expound on this aspect of it, but just to say you need to be making final preparations now. Um, by tomorrow morning, you need, you, you're you not going to have much time tomorrow morning, and, that, and I say tomorrow morning, I mean Wednesday morning, in case those that are watching this a few hours from now, perhaps uh, when they get up in the morning, because I know this is kind of late. 
Okay, flash flood risk over the next three days. We see western um, Louisiana. We see it going from the Gulf Coast all the way up to Shreveport, Texar and in, into Arkansas, Texarkana, El Dorado, Hope, um, Bryant, Benton, Little Rock, Conway, um, over towards West Memphis. Or, well, maybe not quite West Memphis, but almost West Memphis. Uh, we see this most likely uh, what they would what they're calling moderate risk of flash flooding. Um, anywhere in the yellow is a slight risk, so that includes almost the re almost the remainder of of uh, Arkansas, uh, a bit more of of Texas, including uh, perhaps a lot, perhaps at least portions of Houston, uh, and then kind of a kind of an area running through the middle, more or less, of Mississippi. Um, Alabama and Georgia, and uh, the only part of Arkansas not included in that, um, let me make sure I'm saying that right, slight risk, the only part of Arkansas currently forecast to not see a slight risk is pretty much the northwestern, the extreme northwestern corner, um, and that's pretty much, <laughs> it doesn't even seem to include Bentonville in that, so that just shows you how much of Arkansas is included um, and if it does include it, it certainly wouldn't be by much. And I'm referring to uh, Bentonville, but I don't think it, it's right on the line, is what we'll say. But in, or in Rogers uh, is on pretty much on the line of it. So um, and we see a um, a marginal risk taking up a bigger swath of area. Um, this is runs uh, a bit deeper into Texas. Um, a bit deeper into our, uh, Oklahoma, and I should have mentioned, I should have mentioned this, a slight risk also does include portions of Oklahoma, and that um, moderate risk includes the south, extreme southwestern portion of, of uh, Oklahoma. I should have mentioned that. Um, I was focusing more on the area where it's going to see the center of circulation primarily, uh, uh, which includes Arkansas. Um, now, I'm trying to see if I have this. Um, I meant to pull this up. Let me um, go back over to here. No, I already showed that. And again, I apologize. I'm trying to do this as quickly as I can to get it out as quickly as I can. Okay, here we go. This is also what I wanted to point out as well. We see that um, that they have a peak storm surge forecast and, and they stress this is an experimental product. So certainly this shouldn't be taken to be 100% reliable, but this does give you a certain idea, if you will, of what we could see along the coast. We could see um, starting from about Freeport, Texas, all the way over to Ocean Springs, Mississippi, there's a risk of storm surge. Um, basically Galveston Bay um, could see three to five feet. Um, basically in general, the Texas coast from Freeport to the state line could see anywhere from about two to four feet and then up to about six to nine feet, especially as you approach the state border of Louisiana. Now moving into Louisiana, we see uh, this is pretty concerning, nine to 14 feet um, in the west southwestern uh, sections of Louisiana. Uh, on the coast, we see intercoastal city, uh, Ver, Vermilion, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Ver, Vermilion Bay, 7 to 11 feet, Morgan City, perhaps 7 to 11 feet, uh, 4 to 6 feet, moving uh, over points east towards the mouth of the Mississippi River, 2 to 4 feet as you go north from the mouth of the Mississippi River, and then over towards, as I said earlier, Ocean Springs, Mississippi. We could see about 2 to 4 feet, including Lake, Lake, um, I, I don't know how to pronounce this, Borgany, um, and then Lake Pontchartrain and Lake Mar Maripis. I, I, you can tell I'm not from there. <laughs> I do apologize. I don't mean to offend, offend anyone that's from Louisiana. Uh, those lakes, respectively, could see about two to four feet as well. So really, if you are in um, New Orleans, you still need to be uh, paying pretty close attention to this. Um, now, let me show you this product, a courtesy of Ventusky. This is kind of gives you a general idea 
of what it's going to look like potentially in terms of wind gusts shortly before landfall. And, and this is just pretty concerning here. So we see this well-defined center of circulation coming up towards uh, making landfall here, uh, potentially very, very close to the state line, pretty much on the state line, maybe just barely in, in Louisiana as it makes landfall. Let me, yeah, it, it's suggesting perhaps slightly favoring um, Louisiana in terms of making landfall. Now, let me fast forward this in time to about 2 p.m. Uh, actually, no, back to about 11 a.m. I'm not sure which time zone this is. Um, okay, so it's still pretty strong as it comes north. Um, and, you know, you, it, it kind of gives you the idea that well inland, we're gonna see pretty strong wind gusts here. And um, this does, you, you really need to take this storm very, very seriously. And I would just add that if you have not made uh, final preparations, you need to do so before, um, pretty much before midday tomorrow, because after midday tomorrow, and I say, I should say midday Wednesday, mi by midday Wednesday, everything needs to be done. If you need to leave, you need to leave really now. If you're watching this and you still haven't left, if you think you can get out early in the morning, if you can get out now, I would suggest doing so, but um, you might have until about midday Wednesday and then that's it. You need you need to be out of out of uh, and let me let me clarify where, where I'm referring to in particular. I'm just gonna roughly draw basically anywhere in this zone needs to be uh, really needs to um, evacuate. Um, and, uh, really, even if you are further north here, up closer to Shreveport, you really need to consider whether you, you are close enough to, to a body of water, whether it be a creek, river, or lake, or pond, to be of concern. If you are, I would re recommend reconsidering your location temporarily. Um, but as I said, you need to take this storm very, very seriously because, um, this is going to be a big deal um, as we go forward in time. And just because, I, and of course, up here in Arkansas, you know, you're not going to deal with the storm surge, but you could certainly still see flash flooding. So, so this is day two of the storm prediction from the Storm Prediction Center, Convective Outlook. And they're assigning a slight risk area here, pretty much center, uh, I should say central and southern Louisiana. Uh, marginal risk to include pretty much all of, of the rest of Louisiana except perhaps um, as as much as Shreveport. Uh, Shreveport's pretty much on the line there and then you have um, uh, really just a just a residual risk elsewhere but not necessarily an enhanced risk. Cer well yeah not certainly not an enha enhanced risk because that would be a level above slight and we don't see that right now but of course this is only day two um, and certainly we could see this change and I would just I'm just gonna draw on this and anywhere you know you see the northeastern quadrant of the storm that's where you can see the most most likely risk of tornadoes so and again I'm not gonna don't take this to be exact because really anywhere you have some kind of risk but especially in this area, I would say, you need to be on the lookout for a potential for uh, uh, potential for tornadoes. Really, anywhere though, uh, be on the lookout as as you should be anyway. So on that note, that's going to do it for this special bulletin of the Citizen Report. I'm Jonathan Shannon. I do apologize for the rough uh, production quality of this. I'm just trying to get this up as quick as I can, and. Um, as I said again, this is this is not this is not a storm to play with. I'm not trying to fear monger, but um, I need people to understand if you are in these areas, and I know there are there are those who might be watching, uh, certainly within reasonable distance of this. Um, you need to be uh, taking um, preventative actions now. Uh, and as I said, by midday Wednesday, you need to have those uh, actions activated and and done because uh, we're gonna see uh, conditions continue to deteriorate. And then we could see uh, perhaps uh, uh, perhaps close to midnight going into Thursday, we could see it coming ashore, the center circulation. And 
and you really need to uh, treat this storm with uh, with um, with seriousness and and take um, whatever actions you need to take. You need to put them in, need to activate those plans as soon as you can. If it's if it can be immediately, even better. So, on that note, thank you for watching the Citizen Report Special Bulletin. I'm John the Shannon. Um, David Heller, of course, is off. Um, and don't forget our website, thecitizenreport.weebly.com. Uh, look for me on social media, David on social media. And God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for watching uh, The Citizen Report as always. I'll see you right back here again next time. Have a good night, everyone.